want to wish Incarnate Word the best this season. It's uh, always kind of a personal game to me when I have a chance to play these guys. It was my first coaching job. I was a graduate assistant at Incarnate Word, so I got a lot of respect for that city and program and school. And coach has done a great job, um, you know, building that program. So I think they're going to be very competitive and have a good chance to have a good season in, in their league. And um, I know our guys were dialed in. You know, they'd played Texas Tech and uh, Baylor and Purdue uh, really well for the majority of those games. So tonight, you know, those guys had our full respect and we give them a, um, a, good, a good wishes going forward. Also, I uh, want to put on my marketing hat here. I hope you guys will help us out here. We start Big 12 Conference play at 11 a.m. on New Year's Day. And, um, you know, doing what we can here for the fan base. Uh, Trey and I have been working on this since this summer. And the best idea we could come up with is, is mimosas. Trey, do you know how to spell mimosa? M-I-M-O-S-A. Sounds good to me. We uh, Texas fans or basketball fans or just people that might not have anything to do on New Year's Day at 11 a.m., uh, $10 is going to get you a nice ticket to this game. It's going to get you a free mimosa. Trey, do you know what a mimosa is? Uh, being that I'm 21, I do know what a mimosa <laughs> is. Who doesn't like mimosa? You might as well come get one. Trey, have you ever had a mimosa? I've had one. It's pretty good. So I think this is going to be a really good opportunity for Longhorn Nation and just people in general here in uh, Central Texas to come to the first Big 12 game. Hall of Fame coach, uh, one of the best teams in college basketball, West Virginia, 11 a.m., New Year's Day. $10, get you a mimosa. Questions for Trey, I'll try to work on mimosa. Um, absolutely. Uh, the Big 12 being so close and uh, coach kind of broke it down into like our, our first season was, is kind of was is over with now. But it was a big emphasis for us. Like the second we we stepped back on campus and everybody was in the gym, we were straight to work and it was like we were going for a national championship again. Things got ramped up to another level. And it's like we that it's time for us to start to turn the corner because we've had our nights where our defense wasn't working and our offense was or vice versa or we only play for 25 to 30 minutes instead of 40. But uh, I think we've all come to the point where we know it's time for us to turn the corner and start doing this. Did you guys emphasize the fast break coming in? Get 17 points after none last game. Yeah, so that's a, another part of our offense opening up. It was just we, we were trying to play fast push the ball to the floor because we have so many weapons in transition that that's, it's easy free points. What's it been like for you getting some time alongside Dylan and also having another big guy that can go out there and spell you for a little bit and give, give you a breather on the bench? It's honestly, it's lovely. <laughs> it's, it's lovely. I love every second of it. Those are my guys. and. And I'm rooting for them every second of the game, whether I'm on the court or off the court. We, we play with each other. We understand that we're all positionless players and we can all do what's necessary for us to win. So it's, it's really us playing off each other and being able to be more options for our guards in the way they play. Chair, what do you think of Courtney tonight? <laughs> That's my guy, Courtney. Four for eight. I mean, he's Courtney. He, he going to do what he does regardless. You know, it's... When you when you look at his his numbers through the season, he's he's performing. He's shooting at over 40% from three, which is extremely impressive. He works hard. He puts the work in every single day, and he's gonna come to bring it every night, regardless of the circumstances. And he holds himself to a high standard. So, and he knows when he doesn't meet his standard, he's right back in the gym and he's right back to work. Two last ones for Trey. It sounds like from what you said about people coming back from Christmas break, y'all know it's about to. Yeah, I, th I think I think everybody was co and coach made it well aware that like it's it's time, and it's like usually a lot of schools coming back from Christmas break they kind of ease into things, but but for us it was just it was we we kind of got rocked in the face as soon as we stepped on the court for that first practice and and but we responded so that that tells you about our how old we are and our experience 
in in college basketball. So everybody is well aware, self aware, team aware that it's time for us to turn the corner and get this thing going. Last one for Trey. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thank you. <clears throat> Right, See you, boy. Questions for Coach? What was that first practice like? Then what made it this hit in the face for them? I think one of the most important words uh, in basketball and coaching, playing life, really is urgency. And um, you know, I take my responsibility really seriously in the position I'm in. I know the rest of the coaching staff does, and our players do too. So. I think from uh, from my leadership standpoint, just make sure the guys understand that you know uh, we're not we're not back to ease into things. You know, there's some urgency around here. I think um, you know elite people and elite players and elite programs understand that. You know, there's no wasted days. You ever heard the shot clock buzzer go off as many times as it did tonight? Yeah, we've had some good defensive teams over the years at all the places I've had the pleasure to coach and coached a lot of great players and. Um, yeah, actually I have, but tonight I thought the guys were dialed in. You know, again, I think uh, it started just with our respect for Incarnate Word. The guys saw how well they played against Baylor and, and uh, Purdue and Texas Tech. And, um, you know, we understand we were playing a team that had five guys on the floor that could shoot threes, uh, had some experienced grad transfers, a good coach. Um, so, yeah, we, we were ready to play tonight. I think that's a sign of respect more than anything, how, how well our guys played tonight. Um, we understood what could happen. Chris, I don't know. You would use the word doghouse, but Cordy didn't play that much in the last game, and tonight he does. I mean, what's, what's been going on with him the last <coughs> two weeks or so, and how, how's he going? How's he getting along? With him? Oh, I thought Cordy played great tonight. He led our team in minutes played. We've shaken up this lineup a few times, trying to find some things. Um, you know, I've been consistent with my message about Courtney Ramey since I coached against him, and now I'm coaching him. He's a very talented guy. Um, I think all of us, including myself, are striving for you know consistency. Um, I believe Courtney Ramey can be a really good pro. Um, I just we you know if our team can get the best out of him every possession, then I think we'll have a chance to be one of the best teams in the country. Is it fair to say that you have to you have to write him a little bit maybe that you don't have to write others? No, I think that's what coaching is. You know, Muhammad Ali said it best. You know. He, possibly the most dominating athlete in any sports history. And they asked him one time, who's this Dundee guy? And Ali said, well, you know, whoever asked that question doesn't know anything about winning. As a human being, I can only push myself so much. It's how, why coaches exist. You know, I could take you out there right now, Brian. I could tell you to run three sprints, run as fast as you can. You could do it. And if I come out there with you, I can make you go a little bit faster. If you and I have a relationship and you want me to coach you, um, you know, it's what coaching is, you know, and that's my job is to get the most out of these guys. Uh, good thing about Ramey, he's a tough guy. You know, Ramey, Ramey doesn't hold grudges. Ramey just competes, man. Uh, there's not a lot of loafing in Ramey. I mean, he's going, he's going to compete. He's a competitor. He was a competitor before I got here, and I'm just trying to get the most out of him. Good player. Very important. He's one of the leaders of our team. Very important. Um, yeah, we need Ramey at his best. I have no backup plan. If you're going to tell me that Ramey's not going to play at his best these next 19 games, then you know I don't uh, I don't have a backup plan. You tell me we can we can get Ramey playing to his potential and having the best season he's ever had, then I think we're about to go on a pretty exciting ride. I mean, we're going to be a part of the fight. Yeah, I loved it. I thought we shared the ball. You know, it started early where we got Jace a couple shots when individual players turned down a good shot to get Jace a great shot. 23 uh, assists on 33 baskets. That's the, you know, we're sharing the ball. I saw guys being aggressive tonight, but I also saw guys playing the game the right way. You know, so it's it's easy to say, hey, let's just be aggressive. But it's also, it's, it's basketball. You know, it's like you guys understand LeBron could go out there and score 50 points in any game, period. But he finds that balance between assisting and scoring. It's just the way you play the game, right? And I know in the first half it was kind of a challenge to get to the free throw line, right? I haven't been in too many games like this where we only got a couple free throws. So um, that's just that balance. But I thought the flow of the game was well. We were scoring on all avenues, offensive rebounding, defense, 
created offense. We were sharing the ball. So I thought it was a good night offensively. Um, we still don't shoot the three like we know we can, but we get a bunch of offensive rebounds. You know, four crashers tonight had right at three offensive rebounds apiece. So when you miss shots, you go get them. And that's how you win. Yeah, I thought so. We talked to our guys a lot about, you know, don't play the scoreboard, play the game. And we do that in other games too. You know, we, we do that when we're in a Big 12 battle and we're down nine. Don't play the scoreboard, play the game. We, That's just how you have to play as a competitor. So tonight I thought for the most part we did that. Um, we had 10 four-minute games tonight. And I think we played really well in probably seven of the 10. That, that, that's pretty good. Two last ones, Chris, kind of going back to the aggressiveness stuff. Where is the balance between guys trying to push the ball in transition and then it's a fine line, you know, and it's it's really that line where championships are won, because you got a lot of really good teams in college basketball, and you guys have seen those teams I have too. And then there's only a few elite teams, and so I think that one of the lines in between that great and elite, good and elite, whatever you want to call it, is is that line. You know, just trying to find a play the right way. Like you know, we know for us. We've got to get some inside baskets. Our shooters got to get shots. We've got to score up our defense. There's just so many things going on out there, and that just continues to be uh, the mission for us. You know, I'm not changing my tune. Right, go back and watch the first time we we spoke together. Offense is going to be a work in progress. Defense has to hold us, and I think I think we're doing good. I think tonight to get right at 80 points, shoot a good percentage from the floor, have a bunch of assists, have a low turnover game. We had eight turnovers in a Division One game. Doesn't happen a lot. We're one of the best teams in the country taking care of the ball. And tonight, we even beat our average on that. So a lot of good things in tonight's game. Is, is, there, is, there, is there anything you can tell us about Jalen and his decision? Yeah, I think uh, you know it's just part of coaching. None of us like uh, you know you um, you just hope that you know it's it's not realistic, but you just hope that everybody that comes through your program you know maxes out. You know I hope that every GA and assistant coach that comes through here gets a Division One head coaching job. I hope that. Every player that comes through here, it's just, it's just not the reality of our game. You know, we have a roster right now that has transfers, and from time to time, you know, guys will make decisions. So I, re I respect Jalen's decision uh, that he made with his family. Um, I think the decision was made uh, at a plain time, is what he told me. Um, so, you know, I, I respect that. We wish him, we wish him the best. Uh, but it's something personally I don't, I don't like. But this is 2021 college basketball, and. Um, you know, Jalen won't be the first player to go to that portal. Uh, but we wish him the best, uh, period. Have a lot of respect for him, period. Um, you know, we pull for those guys. Uh, we really do. And, um, you know, we're like, we're no different than anybody else. We have players uh, transfer from time to time. We pull pull for those guys. Uh, and we'll be pulling for Jalen. Jerry, you have one? Yeah, Coach, can we go back to the fans coming out to the next game? What does it mean to the players when the crowd is so loud that they barely hear it? Yeah, it, it means we have a home court advantage, and it means you have a chance to win a championship. Because if you don't have a home court advantage, you've got no chance. So, you know, right here in our league is maybe the best example that it's that, ever been in modern sports. There's a reason Kansas dominates this league, and I know we won it a couple years ago. And Baylor is obviously, you know, well right now. But to me, the championship goes through Lawrence, Kansas, until until. Um, otherwise said and so what's going on down there the players change from year to year they've had different coaches you know coach Williams now coach so well it's it's a home court advantage you know there's 16 18,000 16, yeah, 16 three in there every single night no matter who they're playing so that's what we got to get this to the point and um I, I I like where we are we're working at it hard and our fan base is responding our student body is responding and so um, but yeah, we, we got to get to that point where we have a home court advantage. We, we, we got to sell out games here if we're going to compete for championships. There's, there's no backup plan on that either.